Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Stephen Brooks, and welcome today to Morning Glory. It is 6 o'clock in the morning. Let's grab our Bibles and jump into the Word of God. Today we'll be, uh, we will be in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Word, that it is anointed, and we ask that your Holy Spirit would come right now and cause it to be illuminated that the very eyes of our heart, the eyes of our understanding, can receive and grasp the truth of your word. And Father, let us take it and apply it to our lives this very day, we ask in Jesus' name. And together, around the internet world, we all shout and say, Amen. Of course, we shout kind of quiet because it's so early in the morning. Now, verse 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Now, whenever you begin to pray in tongues, whenever you begin to speak in tongues, what takes place is that you begin to move over into the spirit realm. You are communicating directly to God. We are not communicating to other people. We are communicating to God. And what tongues does, it requires you to operate in faith. So whenever you speak in tongues, you are exercising your faith in the Word of God. And faith can get strong, and so you are built up on the inside, big and strong, when you speak in tongues. And what takes place as we speak or even pray in tongues is that we move over into a place as we're communicating with God where certain secrets and mysteries began to become unraveled to us. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. That's uh, referring to the natural aspect of that. You could listen to a person uh, speaking in tongues or praying in the Spirit, and unless the Holy Spirit gives you illumination uh, through the gift of interpretation of tongues, or through discerning of spirits, you cannot tell what is going on there from a natural mental standpoint. Now, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, praise God. Thank God for the however. And this is what we want to talk about. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. From the natural mental perspective, it might not look like much is going on. Actually, it might look and sound like that's just a bunch of gibberish, what that person is doing. Or even your own mind, as you speak in tongues and pray in tongues, your own natural mind might say, this doesn't seem to be doing very much. Uh, it just seems like I'm uttering a bunch of stuff that doesn't make any sense. Thank God that we have the Word of God to bring clarity and understanding to all that we do within the church and within His kingdom because we don't go by feelings, we go by the Word of God. It says, in the Spirit, He speaks mysteries. Ah, so here's, here's why tongues can be such a divisive subject. No matter where you go in the world, there is a dividing line in the body of Christ, and it's called tongues, because the enemy, the devil, Satan himself, does not he does not want believers to come into the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the fruit, the evidence of speaking in tongues. Why? Because you began to operate with a tremendous spiritual tool, a spiritual weapon that is now in your armory, and he's terrified of that because this gift from God allows you to have deeper walk with the Lord, thus coming into greater uh, levels of revelation knowledge. Remember, we talked about uh, in our last message that uh, it says in the Word of God that my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. And when you begin to speak in tongues and pray in tongues, revelation knowledge begins to flow into your life. The scriptures begin to make sense, good teaching begins to make sense, and things begin to fall and lock into place properly, and the next thing you know, things that used to be holding you down, you've become the master over those things, and you're beginning to walk in victory. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to come into it. However, the Bible says, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries, and it's very important 
that while we journey through life, that we're just not a bunch of, uh, for a better word, meatheads, okay, knuckleheads, uh, how can I say, dense people. We want to be spiritual people. The more spiritual you are, the more effective you can be in the natural realm. Woo, hallelujah, praise God. And we need to have true spirituality. It says, however, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. When you pray in tongues, when you speak in tongues, something is going on in the spirit realm, and it's of great concern to the enemy. Although our focus is not on the enemy, our focus is on the Lord. But you have to understand why are tongues fought so much? Uh, there are, you know, millions of evangelical Christians that think tongues are, are you know, fruity, fruity stuff. But then at the same time, you have 800 million what we would call Pentecostal, charismatic believers that do speak in tongues. So something really good is going on here in the Spirit. There is the speaking of mysteries. Woo! Praise God. So tongues is what will carry you over into the Spirit realm where you begin to get the victory in life. You have to understand out of the nine spiritual gifts, it is the gift of tongues that is a a springboard into the other eight gifts. And the more that you speak in your private tongues, the more you will begin to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, even if it's the gift of tongues for uh, public or corporate use or the other wonderful gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is speaking in tongues that allows you to become fluent in the Spirit realm and even to become fluent in the gifts of the Spirit. The more spiritual you are, the more you understand spiritual things. And look, when there's a, a man or a woman that's needed to be able to get some, some lift in the Spirit, when nobody else can get up, you're going to be that person. Why? Because you got up in the morning and you prayed, or or you spent time the night before you went going to, before you went to sleep. You prayed an hour in tongues, and I'm telling you what those uh, those exercises of praying and speaking in tongues like that allow you to get into the spirit very very easy. Where people who do not do this, who are bogged down with hours of watching sports and hours of all kinds of uh, uh, activities that just that just tie them down into. Uh, the earth realm of, looking, of, of living like a chicken and never flying any higher than the chicken coop, and they have no idea that they're eagles that are called the soar in the heavenlies in the spirit realm, I'm telling you, the more that you speak in tongues and pray in the spirit, the more soaring that you're going to do. And you're going to, even your appetite changes. I mean, if you're a chicken, you're happy eating worms. But if you're an eagle, you're like, you know, something about this worm diet is just not satisfying me. Hallelujah. That's why you need to be able to get over into the Spirit and begin to unlock things that God is really wanting you to catch for your own betterment and your own well-being. Now, it says here in verse 2, uh, For no one understands him, however, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. These mysteries are things... Uh, uh, in the Greek, uh, that are beyond our natural ability to pick up with our intellect, okay? And so sometimes in the English language, when we think of the word mystery, we might think of spooky stuff, you know, like the mystery at the museum. Is there some weird stuff in there? And, you know, you have, you have all this weird, spooky, uh, creepy stuff today that are on documentaries or, you know, these 30-minute, 30, uh, 30 half-hour programs on TV of they're investigating more mystery, spooky, weird stuff. This is not what this is talking about. The word mystery in the Greek language the New Testament was written uh, originally in Greek. Uh, this word mystery has a pure meaning, and it, what it means is, is uh, obtaining amazing pure knowledge that is hidden out of your reach of your mental realm. Woo, I'm telling you what. It doesn't matter if your IQ is over 200. If you get over in the spirit, by praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, you'll begin to know things 
that even some of the greatest intellectual people on the planet, they can't wrap their brain around it. I'm telling you, you can go places in the spirit that are awesome. And that's what the vehicle of speaking and praying in tongues will do for you. So this ability, verse 2, to speak mysteries is the unfolding of these mysteries that are beyond the reach of your brain or your intellect to unlock or even simply to understand. Praise God. You have to understand, my friends, that before you were born, there was a plan that God had already laid out for your life. I mean, God told the prophet Jeremiah, before you were before you were even born, while you're in your mother's womb, I knew you. I called you to the nations before you even came out of your mother's womb. God already had a plan for you before you came to this planet. He already had preordained, predestined certain things that you're supposed to do, certain things that you're supposed to accomplish. And uh, what takes place as you begin to pray in the Spirit, as you begin to speak in tongues for extended periods of time, is that those mysteries of predestination, pre-planned events, those things begin to unfold, and you begin to catch glimpses of them by the Holy Spirit. Let me show you this in uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, a famous verse, which would be verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Now watch that. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. And, and these are things that God knows that he wants to get over to you by revelation, by mysteries being revealed. Uh, one translation of the New Testament says divine secrets, okay? These are not things that God is hiding from you because he doesn't want you to know. These are things that God wants you to search out because they are of great value and they are things that you're actually supposed to do in life. For I know, so God knows, he wants you to know, we're talking today about how you can know what he knows and what the Holy Spirit is trying to get over to you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And look, when you receive the word of the Lord concerning God's will and plan for your life, I tell you what, even if you're surrounded by circumstances that can be totally contrary to what God has spoken, but when he speaks it, it just rivets through your whole being, spirit, soul, and body. And when, when you catch the unraveling of the mystery, when you catch the reality, oh my goodness, God has just spoken to me has just revealed to me, has just shown me a glimpse of my future and what I'm going to do, I'll tell you what, you'll get up and you'll get going even if you're in the midst of a difficult trial. You'll say, you know what, this trial cannot last because God has shown me what I'm going to be standing in. God has shown me what I'm going to be doing, so this stuff around me is going to change. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. What if that you somehow saw into the plan of God for your life because you prayed into the Spirit and you began to unravel the mystery? What if God showed you that you are destined? It was God's plan for you, predetermined and pre-planned before you were ever born, that you would be a multimillionaire. And, and, and right now you're making $10 an hour. But what if you found out that was in your destiny? Do you think you might have a little more hustle? in your step? What if you're in pain right now, but you found out that it was God's will for you not just to walk in divine health, but you're supposed to lead fitness classes, and you're supposed to teach people about health and nutrition? <gasps> You'd think, oh my Lord, am I really supposed to do that? And God says, yes, you are, and he shows it to you. And this whole thing comes out while you're praying in the Spirit, while you're speaking in tongues, because the Spirit of God gives Revelation, that's what happens when you pray in tongues. Things begin to get revealed. Mysteries begin to get uh, solved. They go, what I'm saying 
is that stuff that your your intellect you can't grab it with your your mental ability but you are able to grab it spiritually and when you grab it you see it and you grab it spiritually you're like okay I've got a reason for living I have a plan God has revealed it to me and I'm not leaving this planet until it is accomplished and I'm standing in it doing what God has called me to do who glory to God God watch out he is going to show you some things that are, that, will, that are quite startling as you pray in the Spirit, as you speak in tongues, and those mysteries begin to unfold, and they are no longer mysteries, but they are revealed facts, it is revealed knowledge, and it is revealed truth that you can simply comprehend with your understanding. Now, John chapter 16, verse 13 says, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. I'm going to drop down to part B, the latter part of that verse. It's a long verse. It says, and he will tell you things to come. He will tell you. One translation says he will disclose to you things to come. The KJV, King James, says that he will show you things to come. And as you are speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, you begin to unlock the perfect will and plan of God for your life. You begin to see it. And now, because you can see it and you know it, you begin to conform to it. You begin to agree with it. You begin to walk in it. And before too much longer, you're actually standing right in the very midst of it. Praise God. When the Holy Spirit discloses to you things to come, He can do it by either directly telling you that, and some translations say he will tell you things to come. So he could certainly speak and tell you through the inward witness. He can, he can lead you. Even through the still small voice, he can speak to you. And even sometimes uh, the authoritative voice of the Spirit, which is much stronger, of course, he can also speak as well. But he can also, he can also show it to you through disclosing it to you through various methods, through uh, prophetic symbols through prophetic oh I see it type moments where, where God because remember Jesus is a prophet uh, and he likes to exercise your uh, prophetic anointing and I'm not saying you're a prophet if, if you are a prophet God bless you uh, but but even if you're not a prophet you can still have a prophetic flow and you can understand the propheticness of Jesus because he is a prophet, okay, that, that all other prophets pr pattern their ministry after. And he can do some things sometimes that are just really, really cool through prophetic imagery, prophetic symbols. Instead of just point blank saying it, he can demonstrate it to you, and he'll give you that ability to unravel that. And you'll see it, and you'll just be like, oh, my goodness, Lord, I can't believe. How, how come I couldn't catch that? But see, as you begin to pray that thing out in tongues, you're like, oh, my goodness. Look, there can be some things that are so simple. They're right under your nose, but you can't see them. But you begin to pray in the Spirit. You get over into the Spirit, and God can show you that. And you're like, oh, my goodness. See, that's that's why there there is a place for education. There is a place place for developing the intellect, but God can take you places in the spirit where uh, the intellect just can't it, can't, it can't get there. You have to get there first spiritually, and then let your mind catch up later. Woo, glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit wants to show you things to come. In essence, when you are speaking in tongues, and you are praying in the spirit, in essence, what you are doing is praying out God's plan for your life. Not your mother-in-law's plan for your life. Not your best friend's plan for your life because they, may, they might have selfish interest. Okay, they might not ever want to see you leave because they love you so much. Okay, but the thing is, is when you speak in tongues and you begin to pray in tongues, you begin to pray out God's plan. Please say that today. Say God's plan for your life. Woo! Hallelujah! And it's very vital that you do it. I, I look at it at this time of you praying in the Spirit, speaking in tongues. I look at it as an investment. And I, I'll use the example of a retirement investment. 
But I don't want you to think that what you're doing now is not going to be available until you're 70, 80, or until you're 99, okay? What you're doing now by speaking in tongues, praying in the Spirit, could be the thing that fully blossoms two months from now. It could be the thing that fully blossoms two years from now. Some things can be a little bit longer. But with, with a retirement account, you'll never have a retirement savings unless you start sowing into it now, okay? And so what you're doing is when you're speaking in tongues, praying in the Spirit, you are, you are making a deposit right now. You're making a, a deposit. It's not cash, but it's faith. It's destiny. It's, your, it's God's future best for you, and you're praying into it now so that in a short time in the future, I'm not talking about when you get to heaven because you need these things now while you're on the earth. While you're on the earth, you'll step into it in the near future. There was a time when every Sunday evening, the Holy Spirit would move upon me very, very strongly. Right around, it would start right around 5 o'clock, particularly in the summers, uh, when it was beautiful and warm outside, that the Holy Spirit would begin to, begin to move on me, and I would I, I knew on those Sunday evenings I would have to go away, and I, I found the place that was a, a softball field that was very close to where we lived at, and I would tell Kelly I just feel such a tremendous passion to go pray every Sunday evening, and she would say, Yeah, well, go pray. And, uh, you know, I was pastoring at that time, but we, we had services Sunday morning and Wednesday night, so we didn't have a Sunday evening service. So right around 5 o'clock, I would uh, start to head over to the softball field, and I would walk these aluminum bleachers just, uh, you know, back and forth on the, on the bleachers. And this was over 20 years ago. And the Holy Spirit, uh, as the, the more I spoke in tongues and prayed in the Spirit, the more I did that, He began to show me my future. And I saw myself going to the nations. And, you know, I had never really been anywhere up to that point except for Mexico and Canada. And that's when I was younger. So it wasn't like it was really like a work of the Lord or anything like that, anything kingdom related. But, but I saw myself traveling all over the world. And I was like, well, Lord, I don't know how this is going to happen, but I just know that you are showing this to me. See, verse 13, he will tell you, he will, he will disclose to you, he will even show you things to come. Well, Pastor Stephen, how were you getting that? Because what was formerly a mystery, something that mentally I couldn't grasp because it didn't seem to fit into the paradigm of my life, but as I begin to speak in tongues and pray in the Spirit, that thing that was a mystery, it got uh, unveiled. And I could see it. I'm called to the nations. And I, I could see that I'm going to go to the nations. And I, I've been all over the world uh, since that time. And then I began to get prophetic words through very well-established prophets. You're called to the nations. And so I'm like, Lord, I'm, I'm on to this. This is, this is what you have planned for Stephen Brooks before I was ever born, that I would run to the nations. Hallelujah. And so I unlocked that mystery as I walked those bleachers and prayed and prayed. And I, I did that uh, for two summers, and it just unlocked it, unlocked it, and then stepped into it fully. And look, when I stepped into it, I never stopped. I've been going ever since to the nations of the earth. But my friends, what happens is when you pray in the Spirit, when you speak in tongues, you are making a deposit into God's plan for your life, okay? And this is the plan that could unfold two weeks later. I mean, you might deposit and then withdraw two weeks later, or you might deposit, 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 and you're making a big deposit. Why? Because there's a big withdrawal coming down the line, and it might be two years down the line, uh, or, or it might be four years, but there'll come a time when God begins to bring forth all of your sowing, all of your sowing. So here's something that's, that's a key. When you pray in the Spirit, when you speak in tongues, oftentimes, as it says in uh, verse 2, it says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. Others won't understand what you're, what you're praying or speaking about unless they receive revelation of that by the Holy Spirit, okay? But just, just as it is, no one understands that. But as you pray, 
as you begin to unlock those divine secrets, as you begin to gain access into what formerly was a mystery, oh, my friends, you have to understand, as it says here, uh, for no one understands him. You have to understand, you, you will begin to understand. That's what I want to share. You will begin to understand. Oh, I'm on to this. I'm on to this. The Holy Spirit is showing me things to come. He should, now, others, if they were to hear you speaking in tongues, they don't know what's going on. But inside, you and God have a whole lot going on. And he'll begin to show you this one thing over and over and over and over and over and over. Now, you are into tongues and visualization. Your spirit has caught it. Now, because your spirit has grabbed it, now your intellect, your mind can come along and agree and say it's going to happen. Now, from a mental perspective, you might not even be able to figure out how. That's okay. That's God's responsibility, okay? Our responsibility is to unravel the mystery, gain access and insight into what God knows. I know the plans I have for you. Okay, that's great, Lord, but I need to know them too, okay? So that's what he wants you to know. By the Spirit, he unveils it, unveils it as you pray into his plan for your life. And then you begin to see it. You begin to, you begin to grasp it and understand it. And then your mind begins to come along and say, okay, good, good, yes, I can see it. We, we can even plan. We can even begin to plan for this and, and make room for this in our lives. Hallelujah, glory to God. My friends, on top of what I would call regular fellowship with the Lord, time that you spend in the Word of God, uh, studying the scriptures, time that you would just spend waiting on the Lord, having fellowship, talking with the Lord, perhaps interceding for those who need prayer. You also want to take some time to pray and speak in tongues to access these mysteries. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, that's what happens when you speak in tongues. You get over in the Spirit. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. He speaks divine secrets. He speaks those things that are outside the range of normal mental understanding. Your brain can't reach it, but your spirit can. So it's your spirit praying to God, not your brain. Your brain can just take a nice little break while you pray in tongues. And as your, as your spirit begins to grab the mystery and unveil it by the Holy Spirit, then your brain uh, gets to enjoy uh, that revelation as it unfolds. All right, lift up your hands. Heavenly Father, I pray for those that are watching today that they begin to access these mysteries that you have for their life starting today, that they begin to go over into the Spirit and pray out the plan that you have for uh, their lives, that they pray it out, that they pray it out, they, they pray it out, that they speak in mysteries, speak in tongues, and pray it out so that their understanding is benefited. Now, Father, we thank you for this. We thank you for revelation coming through interpretation of tongues. We thank you for revelation coming through the Spirit showing and disclosing what it is that is going to ta uh, uh, take place and transpire. We thank you for this incredible work of your Holy Spirit that unfolds in our lives as we speak and pray in tongues. So, Father, we receive this and we step into it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you've never spoken in tongues before, uh, you can get filled with the Holy Spirit right now. Those of you that are already filled, uh, hang on with me uh, just for a moment. Those of you who do not yet speak in tongues, lift up your hands. I want to pray for you now. Heavenly Father, everyone watching right now who does not speak in tongues and who is not filled with the Holy Spirit, fill them now, Father, in the name of Jesus, with your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, receive. Hallelujah. All right, now, you are filled. Uh, you didn't need to feel anything. Maybe you did feel something. That's great. But either way, we take the promises of God by faith. And so you're ready. All right. All of us now, we're all filled. Let's speak in tongues together on three. One, two, three. Speak out the utterance that the Spirit of God would give you now. 
Come on, speak it out with me. Hallelujah. This is your spirit communicating with God. God is a spirit. Those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. There is a place for speaking in English, but there is a place for also speaking in tongues. Speak in tongues now. I see tongues of fire over your heads. My friends, as you do this for extended periods of time, I encourage you to at least aim for 20 minutes. Okay? Of pure tongues, all tongues. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Speaking, praying in tongues. What will happen is that God's plan for your life, you'll see it. It'll unfold. You'll grab it. Look, there's a million directions you can go in your life. There's a million different things you can do your life. Uh, do, do, do in your life. There's all kinds of tests that are intellectually based. And thank God for the tests. They're, they're designed by good people that are trying to help people. Uh, find out what they're supposed to do in life. But there is no test that you can sit down that is psychological, that is mental, that, that is like, you know, multiple choice, answer the question, and, and then you take some kind of personality test or spiritual gift test, and you're trying to find out God's plan for your life through a psychological evaluation. Come on, that you cannot touch the spirit with that stuff. That stuff is well-meaning, but if you want to really find out what God has called you to do, come on, do the work. Speak in tongues. Pray in tongues. Go over into that area where the mysteries are at, unravel them, and get over into those things where God will show you what He had pre-planned for you before you were ever born. You don't need no test with multiple point questions and stuff like that. Those things can help a little bit, but they cannot touch the Spirit. Remember, this whole word mystery in the Greek means those things that are out of reach of the mental and intellectual realm. Woo! Woo! Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. Spirit first, then soul, which is your mind, your intellect, and your emotions, and your will, and your brain, and all your brain power, and then body. See, don't, don't be led by your intellect. Most people that are intellectually led are arrogant, okay? They're prideful, and they have a great sense of uh, their self-worth and their great self-ability. And to a certain degree, even Christians that are intellectually dominant, uh, they can be very arrogant. That, that, that's why uh, tongues just smashes against intellectual pride. Why? Because when you speak in tongues, you sound so silly. Hallelujah. The wisdom of God is foolishness in the eyes of the world, and the so-called wisdom of the world is rubbish and foolishness in the eyes of God. That's why if you want to stay humble and you want to stay on fire, speak in tongues, because the world thinks it's crazy. Hallelujah. But it is the wisdom of God confounding the so-called wisdom of the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One more time. Speak in tongues on three. One, two, three. Shida baba sandaraya. He kanababa shikadaraya sukoraya. Good, good, good. Do that for 20 more minutes uh, uh, nonstop and uh, get ready for the day and walk in the revelation of God. Hallelujah. Walk in the unfolding of God's plan and God's will for your life by the revealing power of the Holy Spirit and be blessed. My friends, I'll see you back next week on Morning Glory. Till then, have a great week and keep speaking in tongues. Bye-bye.